Hey you guys, so recently I mentioned on Twitter that I have been doing a lot of decluttering of my makeup stash. I was trying to be really harsh on myself of like getting rid of all the things that I haven't used and I know I don't have any intention to use. Obviously a lot of the makeup that I receive is PR and some of those things are shades that don't work for my skin tone or things that don't work for my skin type, but I realized that I have actually purchased a lot of products as well that I haven't ended up really using. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to do a video just kind of re visiting all the products that I've purchased with my own money uh, that I haven't really used or haven't really dug out and perhaps why if I feel there is a reason behind it. I already have my brows on because brows are something that like I've always just bought the same product. I never was like, let's fuck around and try something new for brows. No, 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 no. I don't play around when it comes to brows. So the first thing I grabbed, I decluttered a lot of like my primers and stuff because as you guys know, I'm not a huge primer person. Every once in a while, there's a primer that comes along where I'm like, okay, like I can fuck with this, but I usually end up not using it. This is something that I picked up <laughs> and used maybe once. Uh, this is the Arborean uh, Glow Cream. It's an illuminating face cream and I'm going to be using it as kind of like a primer. I'm gonna get a healthy dose of that. I think with this, I really like the idea of like an illuminating primer because as you guys know, I like to be very glowy and dewy, but I think because primer's like not really a step in my routine that I normally put in, I sometimes buy a primer here and there and then I just end up forgetting that I bought it to be completely honest because it's just not, it's kind of like if you bought a toner for the first time and you never had used toner before and you were only like a warm water and moisturizer kind of person or better yet, just water. I just kind of end up forgetting to use it but this feels really nice going on. Like it feels like a super kind of like creamy moisturizer. Will I continue to use this? Mm, probably not. I just feel like because of the job that I have, something has to really, really stand out for me to be like, ooh, I'm gonna put that with my shit that I'm gonna actually use. The next thing I wanted to grab was the Tom Ford Stick Foundation. We have a tumultuous relationship, this, this foundation and I. I bought it because I heard a lot of like working makeup artists raving about it constantly. Like it was something that um, I would always hear working makeup artists talking about when they said that they loved it so much. It was the most beautiful foundation in the world and blah, 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 so I was like, that sounds like a foundation for me. I bought this kind of like at the beginning of when I was starting to have skin issues and uh, I felt like anytime I used it, it really, really broke me out, but I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away or like donate it or anything because it was just so expensive that I was like, ugh, I really like don't wanna, don't wanna get rid of it just yet. So I'm gonna try it again today. I'm not sure how well this color is gonna match me. It's looking pretty yellow. I think what I'm gonna do is just take this on like a brush. Ooh, I haven't really decided how I wanna do this. I think what I'm gonna do is take this on like a little foundation brush and just kind of stipple it onto the areas where I actually need coverage, just because if it doesn't really match my skin, then it won't be a huge deal if it's not like full force all over the place. But if it's just in the areas where I need it, Maybe it'll be a little bit better. And I'll definitely give you guys an update on Twitter or something as to whether or not this breaks me out. I remember liking the finish of this foundation. Like I do feel like it's kind of a nice glowy foundation and it's not exorbitantly full coverage. Like it's definitely covering my redness and stuff like that, but it's not doing anything crazy. I guess we can do a little comparison on both sides of my face. I'll do it on one side so you guys can check it out. I'm just kind of focusing that coverage towards the center of my face and then once I have like less product on my brush, I'm kind of blending out towards the outskirts. The color actually doesn't look too bad, but I'm not sure. Whenever I see it on camera later, I'm like, oh girl, <laughs> whoa, that was not a good match. So that's kind of the difference in coverage. I definitely feel like it's doing a good job. Like it does look really pretty and it does have kind of like a skin finish texture. I don't feel like it's too cakey or overwhelming, which with stick foundation, I do feel like sometimes it's just a little bit too overwhelming because I think more than anything, you just end up applying way too much because of the way that the product is kind of presented. Like most people aren't taking it on a brush or a beauty blender, they're kind of swiping it onto their face, which that's depositing quite a bit of product, you know what I mean? I'm gonna use my beauty blender that's not really even wet anymore to just kind of quickly blend out those edges and make sure that we don't have any weird lines or anything. Just because I didn't apply that completely all over the face. 
so funny. I feel like, I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before, I feel like I have like makeup woes that come literally overnight and sometimes leave overnight as well. But I used to have the worst problem with uh, foundation settling into my fine lines. I was doing all these different things. I was trying so many different foundations because I hated how it made me look throughout the day. And then it just stopped. And I was like, great, fucking fantastic. No more fine lines, I guess I <laughs> reverse aged, awesome. And then it started up again, so. So for my concealer, <laughs> I've bought this three times and I've given it away twice. Why do I keep buying it? I, I, I don't know, but this is the YSL Touche Clot uh, concealer. I keep buying this concealer and I keep thinking that one day we're going to love each other and that has yet to happen, but I don't know. I just, I, I really keep holding out hope. And then they come out with these like limited edition packaging that are so cute and I'm like, God damn it. I'm just applying a little bit of that and I'm blending it out with my concealer brush. And then I think I'm gonna take my finger and just kind of dabble over top as well. Oh, actually this is kind of nice. This looks kind of nice. It's almost looking like it's like hydrating my under eye a little bit. I'm suspicious. I'll have to look at that in another light later on because sometimes I, under these studio lights, I'm like, oh wow, this actually looks really nice. And then later I'm like, oh no, no, no. No, it doesn't, no, it does not. Oh, Natasha, I don't know what to say. So for eyes, it was kind of a toss up for me between the Viseart, Visart, and the Natasha Denona palettes. Viseart palettes I bought because YouTube forced me. Uh, and then Natasha Denona I bought because YouTube forced me. Viseart is um, kind of expensive. I believe this palette was, let me look it up. Ooh, what? Okay, so this is $100 Canadian. And I remember watching a lot of reviews on, on YouTube and stuff like that and everyone was like, no, it's totally worth it, blah, blah, blah. And fair enough, there's 12 colors in here and all that kind of stuff and you can break it down by like price per color and blah, blah, blah. But I just feel like, First of all, the you guys know I'm like a packaging junkie. I do I do love a good packaging, I will admit. Um, and this packaging is the cheapest packaging on the planet. Um, it's just not anything, like the price definitely isn't coming into the packaging. Let's just put it that way. Whatever, I'm happy to spend money on a product if it's gonna be incredible and I, really was just like expecting something different, I guess, because I feel like they're perfectly fine shadows. Let's just get that out of the way, they're perfectly fine. But I feel like if you're gonna charge $100, your shadows should be doing something that other shadows are not. And for me personally, I didn't feel like that was the case. I felt like I kind of used this palette and I was like, yep, that's a, that's a brown eyeshadow, all right. I wasn't like, wow, the blending, wow, it's so smooth and, Silky, like I was just like, it's an eyeshadow. And so that I think was the biggest disappointment for me. And it's kind of why I didn't really continue to dig this out after I tried it the first time. I was sort of like, okay. This guy cost me, uh, so this guy cost me $305 before shipping. Uh, and I, <laughs> this is like so pristine and untouched because it truly is untouched. I hummed and hawed, first of all, let me say this. I would not consider myself a particularly cheap person. I would not consider myself a particularly frugal person. Like I, I, I'm, I'm willing to spend money like it's water, you know, like I'm happy to spend money, but like there was just something about Natasha Denona where I was like, man, that's a, that's a whole other level. And you know, I had like seen them in stores a couple times. I had seen them in other friends' collections. I'd seen obviously a ton of videos of them and I was like, oh, okay, they look really pretty and there's lots of metallics and they're nice and shiny. I think one of the main reasons I haven't really reached out and used this palette is because first of all, there's only two true mattes in this palette, which are these two right here. And then there's two kind of matte colors that have a little bit of a sheen to them right there. And then we have a lot of super shimmery, very, very metallic shadows throughout the palette. I'm gonna put a little bit of eye primer on and I'm gonna bring you guys in nice and close. And uh, we're gonna fuck around with this palette and see if we can make something beautiful together. Okay. I'm gonna start with this color right here, which is the one that I said was kind of matte, but has a little bit of a weird sheen to it, just cause I wanna see how it actually goes on the eye. Like if it does show up with shimmer or if it goes on pretty matte. Can't believe I've never used this product. I'm pretty upset with myself. And I'm just bringing that into the crease. 
Actually, that goes on pretty matte. Next, I'm gonna dip into this kind of like dark, oh shit. Oh no, everything's fine. I thought I dug it out with my nail. I'm gonna dip into that kind of like warm matte brown color. I do feel like I'm having to dip into these shadows quite a bit to build them up, but they are blending out very, very well. I'm gonna take a big clean brush and just kind of blend over those. I still have my little eyelash extensions on, in case you're wondering why it looks so naturally pretty. <laughs> it only feels like natural and fair to use the green colors in this palette because it is like a majority green palette. I'm gonna grab this like super emerald color right there. Ooh, ooh, what shadow brush am I gonna use? I'm picking that up on my Smith 253 and I'm going to pack that onto the outer corner, huh? I feel like, again, with this one, it's weird. It almost goes on more like a wash of color with kind of an iridescence, more than like a full impact uh, color. That could be what it's meant to do. Okay. I'm gonna try kind of packing that on a little bit with my finger and see if that helps. Oh uh, yeah, that helps a little bit. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer and just kind of like carve out a uh, thing. I'm gonna carve out a thing. Just taking that right across my lid. I just want that to act as a little bit more of kind of like a sticky base for this. And then I'm gonna pick up this sort of more olivey green there. Oh, that is doing something weird. I'm gonna press that right over top of where I put my eye primer. That is doing some weird shit. Okay, that's okay. I definitely do feel like when I went through my uh, products that I was surprised by how many of the products I haven't used are like higher end. But when I was thinking about it, I was like, I definitely feel more critical of products when I know that they are so expensive because to me, like if you're gonna charge $300 for an eyeshadow palette, the eyeshadow should be doing itself. <laughs> and, and maybe that's part of why I sort of am not as taken by a lot of my like super high-end products because a lot of the things that I pulled today are like Tom Ford and Charlotte Tilbury and the Natasha Denona stuff. Like those were kind of the things that I was pulling out as examples of things that I personally like just haven't used at all. Um, and I wonder if it's just because like I haven't used them due to the fact that they didn't blow my freaking mind. That's how it kind of feels. But anyways, I'm gonna grab this super shimmery and beautiful, uh, like kind of yellowy olive gold situation. And I'm going to pack that onto the inner corner. I feel like these ones would be best applied with like a finger, a finger, not necessarily yours, just which any finger you got laying around. Not necessarily even in terms of impact because I'm definitely getting the kind of impact that I'm looking for, but more so in terms of just not getting uh, crazy fallout. Sort of blending those together a little bit more. Um, I feel like that mid-toned green that we used like right in the center of the lid is kind of doing some weird shit. Like it's just, I don't know if it's just that that's the color that it is, but it almost seems to, like when I'm applying it over top of this uh, lighter color to blend the two together, it almost seems like it's darkening a little bit. It's really weird. I also feel like I'm having an oddly hard time making these look transitioned, even though like they're all shimmery greens. It seems like the easiest thing to transition, but maybe it looks better on camera, I don't know. It's just a lot, it's just a lot of metallic, you know? Like it's definitely, as I said, that's one of the things that I, first kind of took issue with with these palettes is there's so there's so many shimmers that it's almost like you have no choice but to do exclusively shimmery eyes or use the palette with um another palette i'm gonna dip into the viseart shadows um just because i i am needing some mattes so i'm gonna be dipping between this dark brown and this kind of black color um and i'm just going to deepen up my outer corner okay i'm just taking that kind of over top of my dark emerald color there on that outer outer corner and i'm bringing it like maybe halfway into my crease and this is a kind of like a fluffier brush just to really diffuse that color and then i can go over that with my 
very first brush that I use to put down our crease color. I'm just gonna wipe away underneath my eye and, and redo my concealer afterwards because I'm having, I'm having troubles. <laughs> I'm just redoing my concealer here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that kind of light uh, highlight-ish shade in the Natasha Denona palette and I'm just going to sort of go over top of my brow bone. Oh, see, this one's kind of coming up a little bit shimmery. Mm, weird. If you guys have bought the Natasha Denona products, please tell me if you like them. I'd like to, I'm interested to know the people that have spent money on it, if you guys feel like it was worthwhile. Because like, I, like I think I would love this palette if I was a working makeup artist, for instance, because it would really give me that kind of like impact that I'm looking for, um, especially for photography and stuff. But I just feel like as an everyday makeup wearer, I can't see myself still, like I still can't see myself digging this palette out. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that warm brown shadow underneath the eye. Uh, I'm using a little bit of the dark brown uh, Viseart uh, mixed with a little bit of that black just to kind of connect that outer corner. Maybe I should take a little bit of this shimmery thing because we <laughs> that's what we don't have enough of here is shimmer. So yeah, I'm gonna take um, this kind of pale yellowy color and I'm gonna bring that onto my inner corner. I don't know, dude. I feel like part of the problem is that I've definitely gotten worse at makeup since I've been on YouTube, but I still feel saddened by these results. I'm gonna take a little bit of that black uh, eyeshadow and put it just on my outer corner in place of liner, because I don't want to cover up this olive masterpiece. And then I'm gonna pop on some lashes and I'll zoom you guys out and we can do the rest of my glowing face. Okay, I put on my lashes and mascara and I toughened up my brows a little bit because I felt like they needed that. So moving right along to our face. <laughs> Hourglass. I think it was Jaclyn Hill that was like super into these for a while. These are the ambient lighting bronzers. Um, so I picked up two different colors and I have uh, gently swatched both of them. <laughs> I remember in Jaclyn's video, I think it was Jaclyn. I could be lying. If it was you, Jaclyn, I think I remember her saying like that she was like, oh, it looks glittery, but it's not on the face. And I was like, okay. And then I went into Sephora and I was like, oh, that does look glittery, but it won't be on the face. And then I got home and I like swatched it again and I was like, nah, that's pretty fucking glittery. And I think I just like didn't use it. I can't, I can't remember if I've ever used it. It looks like I've just aggressively rubbed my finger into both of them and then called it a Day. But uh, I'm gonna try them today. So I'm gonna be using the color Luminous Bronze Light. You know what? It's actually not that shimmery on the face. <laughs> it's actually just really pleasant looking. I feel. It blends out really easily. It builds up really easily. Ooh, that color might be a little bit orange for me. I'm gonna take my Beauty Bender and just kind of diffuse that a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit of the diffused bronze light. Wait, what? Wasn't that, was this one called the same thing? Oh no, this was luminous and this was diffused. Okay, so I'm gonna use diffused bronze light. Oh, I can't really tell now that I'm putting it over to, oh yeah, maybe that's a little bit more bronzy rather than orange. Ooh, is this looking muddy now? Oh, I can't tell. I actually just feel like that blends out super beautifully and it doesn't, I mean, it's definitely a powder, but it doesn't look super powdery because it has that little bit of sheen. Like the, the, the thing that looks like glitter when you swatch it almost ends up looking like kind of a like healthy glow sheen when it's on. Now I'm wondering if I did use this in a video. It's really all a blur. I mean, that's, that's the trouble with like trying so many products. It's like sometimes I'm like, was this in a favorites video or did I hate this? I can't remember. Wow, I think I look pretty fucking fly with that on. Okay, the next thing is Charlotte Tilbury. This is the blush in Cheek to Chic. Oh no, First Love. It says swish outer shade up cheekbone and pop middle shade on apples of cheek. What? How would I, it, there, see there's like a little tiny, how would I do that? I'm just gonna rub it all together. I'm gonna use this big brush. Um, I think the reason that I didn't end up using this is because, I don't know, it's really pretty. Um, I think the reason I didn't end up using this is because I, you guys know how I am with blushes. I'm so like, 
<laughs> manic about my blushes. I find a blush that I love and I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna use another blush again. And then it gets discontinued inevitably every single time because the universe despises me, uh, even though I'm a good person. And so sometimes I'll buy blushes preemptively, hoping that it's gonna be my new favorite blush and hoping that it won't be discontinued. Um, and I think that's what I do with that Charlotte Tilbury one. But it's not blowing me away. Like sometimes I put on a blush and I'm like, ooh, shit, this is gonna be my new blush. I think this one looks fine. I'm definitely not like about to get it discontinued, you know? For my highlight, I mean, I could feature truly any powder highlight. I've bought a disturbing amount of powder highlights. As I'm sure many of you know, uh, I have not really been about the powder highlights lately. I've been really uh, switching over to creams just because I do still have a little bit of skin texture um, and I feel like powder highlights really tend to um, highlight that. <laughs> so yeah, it's just kind of been, for me, I've been moving away from them so much. But the one thing that I truly have never ever ever used because there's a ton of powder highlights that I've bought but I've used them enough, like a reasonable amount, a respectable amount. The uh, highlights that I truly have not reached for at all is Fenty Beauty. I think Metal Moon, the one that looks like completely white, I've used that a few times, um, but these are the duos and I have not touched them since I did my review on them. This one is uh, Mean Money and Hustla Baby. So I'm gonna use that kind of lighter shade first. Uh, And then I'm gonna go over with a little bit of the more intense kind of glittery side. See, like, I like the color of this one a lot. I think it's like really nice and kind of like peachy gold. It's super pretty. But I think it's just, I don't know. I just, I really, I have kind of like a little bit of a scar almost on my cheek. I don't know where from. What happened to me, mom? And then I have this kind of fat pocket sort of thing. This is like super nitpicky, but um, I just have like, I just have like weird texture on my cheeks. I feel like, I feel like a lot of people have like super plump, like beautiful cheekbones and highlight looks really pretty on them because of it. And I feel like I have like lumpy fucking sack of potato cheekbones. <laughs> So anytime that I go and put a powder highlight on, I'm like, oh, I just don't have smooth enough skin texture for that. Like it just shows every single pore and every single little like divot of lumpiness. And it makes me so sad. <laughs> I look so lumpy with this on. <laughs> oh, Tom Ford. I don't know what it is. I, I'm so drawn to Tom Ford. Like whenever I see his shit, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna get some Tom Ford. And then like I have eyeshadow palettes, I have blushes, I have the foundation, I have the concealer now that they reformulated because they despise me. I have lipsticks, like I have so many things from Tom Ford that I have not touched. Like, to the, like truly, just so you can understand, I haven't even swatched this, okay? Like that is an unswatched lipstick. And it doesn't stop there. Like 99% of them are untouched completely, not even swatched. Like that stamping, that TF stamping is so fresh. I can still smell the machinery. And then there's products like those duos, the eye duos, <laughs> so good. And I've used the shit out of those, like perhaps overstayed my welcome with those products. There's just certain things that it's like, I go to Sephora, I buy it, and then I'm like, now I'm gonna bring you home to my dungeon to rot. <laughs> I'm gonna try this color called Sweet Mystery. That's what they called me in high school. Ooh, there's a little bit of shimmer. This is almost my exact lip color, except for my lips aren't naturally shimmery. Ooh, ooh. I feel like I did like one pass and I was like, nice. And then I did two passes and I was like, oh, very shimmery. <laughs> I don't know. It really is competing with the extreme olive glitter on my eyes right now. And then this on my cheeks, there's a lot of, there's a lot of texture and, and metallic going on right now. So what have I learned today? Truly, don't judge a book by its cover with Hourglass. Do judge a book by its cover with Natasha Denona. I think the most surprising thing to me, like if you were to ask me if I like drugstore, mid-tier, or high-end products, I feel like I'd always be like, high-end. But 
I don't think that's true. <laughs> just based off consumption alone. And somebody was asking me, they were like, well, do you think it's because the product's so expensive that you're nervous to use it? And I was like, hell no, baby. Like, it, I, like if something's expensive and I love it, I'm like, glug, 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 glug. Like, I'm more than happy to continue using it. There were certain things where I was like, oh, I don't really actually have many things that I've bought and haven't used. But then when I opened my lipstick drawer, it was like, fucking what you want, baby. Like, I had nothing but choices because I am such a lipstick hoarder like I really really love buying lipsticks and and I never fucking use any of them because I wear lip balm and nude lipstick but even nude lipstick like I have so many like YSL lipsticks and Tom Ford and freaking Giorgio Armani like all these super expensive lipsticks that I I kept opening and being like oh have I used this have I used this and I'm like no never even swatched it okay so i definitely feel like in terms of products that i end up using up completely it seems to come mostly from the sort of like mid-tier product range which i mean that's something good to know about myself perhaps one day i'll stop uh spending money on luxury products but mm, probably not overall not my finest work <laughs> Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below and I will get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a very good day. Peace out.